You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hello, my lovely friends, and welcome back to the Miss Artastic Podcast. I am your host, Kathleen McGivern, and yes, I am Miss Artastic, and I create art resources lessons and YouTube videos for art teachers and for kids. I curate and write articles for the Ms. Artastic blog, which you can find at MsArtastic.com. I create weekly drawing videos for kids on the Ms. Artastic YouTube channel. I create these podcasts. And I also have my membership for art teachers called the Artastic Collective. If you need art resources or lessons, this, of course, is the place to be. From my membership to my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic, I can, comp- I can provide you with anything that you need to teach a stellar art lesson. In this episode, I am going to give you some fresh and new ideas for teaching art at the end of the year. And yes, this shall include end of year art lesson ideas. Now, the best thing about the end of the year is that you can officially start counting down those days, tearing up your classroom, and minimizing all the mess and clutter that accumulated throughout the year. And you can start redesigning your dreams for your classroom for the year to come. It is the perfect time for reflective teaching, where you can reflect on what you did well, what worked, lessons the kids loved that you should do next year, or similar ones of, but also reflect on what you should do less of or what you can let go of. Every year I tear my room apart and redesign and I generally recycle or remove. I do this during the last month as kids are busy, just doing a tiny bit at a time. And before I know it, I'm walking out the door on the last day, all done, and ready to go for when back to school rolls around. As well, I always think about things that worked well and I write down things that I want to change or add or do more of next year. That way, when I return in the next school year, I can look at my notes and I am ready to go. Once I go into vacation mode, there is no turning back and I will be quick to forget Literally everything. Anyway, let's talk about end of the year art lesson ideas. Here are my five art lesson ideas for the end of the year. So the first one is end of year memories for art. So students can create art that explores their favorite memories from the year. Students can brainstorm five to eight of their most favorite memories. You can even do table group brainstorms or whole class discussions of highlights from the year before students make their own list. Next, you can have students create a drawing that features their top five favorite memories from the school year. Another idea is that they could create a mixed media collage that features their favorite memories. Students could also divide their page into different sections and in each section they could illustrate a memory. You could also have kids do collaborative works. For instance, you can make a whole class list and have kids vote ideas down to the top five by writing their names beside three choices of a class list. Uh, Then you could have groups of kids make collaborative artworks on one memory. Divide the class up into five groups and then have those groups each illustrate one of the memories. You can give each group a poster board or larger paper and then kids can work together to think of one composition or how they could divide the page up so that they could each work on a piece of it. Or maybe it's one image, they divide up into sections, and each person completes a section. It's up to them, and of course, this is all dependent on the age of your students. 
Of course, be flexible with the mediums and materials with your end of year projects as you definitely don't want to make big messes or put added pressure on yourself when you're trying to wrap things up. Just keep it simple or let kids choose their own medium from a selection of just a few things. For a ready to use end of year memories art project tutorial, check out my resource in my Teachers Pay Teachers store where students explore graffiti, line art, and memories from the year to create an end of year artwork. If you're an Artastic Collective member, this is part of your membership. This graffiti art and line art project is a fun way for students to reflect on their favorite memories from the year and to show some of the techniques they learned in art. Students will use the element of art line, symbols, and graffiti styled lettering to create an end of year art piece that shows what they have learned in the year and a few of their favorite memories from the school year. This project uses wax crayon and felt marker and is complete with a visual and text step by step, a rubric for marking, a lesson plan and a finished example, and of course a step by step drawing handout to allow your students to create this piece successfully. Find the link in the show notes on my blog or check out the end of year section in my TPT store. Categories are on the left side. Click end of year. The next idea is end of year directed drawings. Honestly, it is wrap up time, so don't feel guilty if you scale things back in that last month. You can definitely take it easy. You did your best all year and taught them what they need to know. As you wrap up in that final month, you can scale back and work on drawing techniques before they head out into the summer by using directed drawings. You can draw what you feel like or draw end of year themed directed drawings. For end of year themed directed drawings that are ready to use and print into booklets, check out my end of year directed drawings resource in my TPT store. You can also find this lesson in the show notes of my blog. As well, I have end of year finish the picture designs that you can use to allow for kids to experiment and test their creativity with choice mediums with a focus on and end of year theme. Also available in my TPT store end of year category. In addition to this, I have an entire YouTube channel that you can scroll through and find ready to use directed drawing lessons that are all classroom friendly. On days when you need some time to get things done, tidy up, or take down in your classroom, just pop on my videos. I'll help you teach and I'll free you up so you can help kids connect, reminisce, or just get things done that need to be did. Of course, it's end of year and there is a lot to do. Search Ms. Artastic on YouTube and don't forget to subscribe as I release new videos weekly. Hey, Kathleen McGivern here, and I just wanted to pause this episode to let you know about my art teacher membership site because it's kind of a big deal and saving tons of art teachers a lot of money on art resources for their classroom. To better support art teachers, I created the Artastic Collective. With the Artastic Collective Art Resource Library membership for art teachers, my mission is to provide you with prepared art lessons, resources, and activities that will allow you to free up your time and live your life, whether that means traveling, pursuing your hobbies, or spending time with your family. It will provide you with fully planned art lessons and resources that cover standards and include assessments and rubrics that will be given to you monthly and you will also have access to a library of previously released resources. You should be able to be an instructor or teacher and be able to have time to live your life. With this membership, you will receive teaching ideas, inspiration, and guidance to help you navigate and problem solve in your classroom or studio. This membership is intended for elementary and middle school teachers. Find my membership at artasticcollective.com. Now, back to the episode. The next idea is end of year places I have gone. 
art project. So I love creating art pieces that reflect the places, the places that students have traveled or have gone either literally or in their learning journey through the year. So figuratively or literally. Students can trace their foot or shoe on their paper as a symbol of themselves. And inside they can illustrate where they have traveled on their educational journey this year. I have a ready to use art lesson tutorial for, for this that you can find again in my TPT store by clicking the end of your category on the left side or again find this resource in my blog post show notes. End of your graduation art lesson. If you have a group of kids that is graduating from a grade, such as like kindergarten or high school, you can totally make graduation portraits with those students. For younger kids, you can do somewhat of a directed drawing and have students draw in details that are specific to their own appearance. You can let them use easy prep mediums such as wax crayons or felt markers and watercolor paints and then let them place um, paint with resist right so if you use just watercolors and wax crayons um, you can let those kids play with resist painting techniques for older students you can have them draw a portrait of themselves in that moment of time it could be a portrait that illustrates how they identify or one that shows the real them. Or it could be a, dri a grid drawing of their grad picture. So that could also be something interesting. For a primary graduation art lesson, check out my end of year graduation art lesson tutorial in my TPD store that is ready to use or find it in the end of year section with your Artastic Collective membership. Sketchbook or drawing prompts. Finally, you can definitely have kids work on sketchbook or drawing prompts during the end of the year to keep them exploring, experimenting, and creating in those last weeks without you having to do a lot of planning or prep. Simply create some drawing or sketchbook task cards that you can assign for each day and let the kids choose the mediums they want to create with. While they create, have fun, and turn on some fun music or put on some cool ambient world six-hour playlists on YouTube while they create. I love the Harry Potter ambient world ones, um, but also today I discovered they had a Pirates of the Caribbean one where you're like surfing on a pirate ship and there's like the pirates of the Caribbean music going on. Honestly, we were really pumped up at 8.30 in the morning. Even the administrator was like, whoa, this is really getting us going. I thought, yeah, it really does. It's, yeah, you always can get bumped up with some little pirates of the Car Caribbean music, but also Harry Potter, if you're a Harry Potter fan. But don't worry, if you're not, there are so many, so, so many. So take a look. It's a fun vibe. I think there's like Lord of the Rings. I don't know. It's called Ambient Worlds. It's a channel on YouTube. But also, um, if you don't want to do an ambient world, I love going to explore.org and there's like live cams of like different places in nature. You can watch manatees, the ocean. There's usually in the spring like eagle cams in their nests or osprey. Oh my gosh, guys. A little bit of nature in the classroom is great as well. So that's a really great way to keep kids calm, but also not overstimulate them <laughs> it's interesting it's it's interesting but not too stimulating you know um so these are as well these uh low-key activities require a little prep so the task cards i mean so this will give you the much needed time for closing up your classroom and getting ready for back to school before you walk out the door on that last day for ready to use sketchbook prompts find my sketchbook task cards in my tpt store under sketchbooks or find the link to the resource in the show notes on my blog. Just print, cut, and use one a day or whatever you need to do. There is a ton so they'll last you for years and years to come. No prep is my jam. Action item. So I'm going to leave you with an action item and here it is. 
and it's not necessarily related to an art lesson idea, but is necessary for the end of the year. Okay, here it is. Write down all things that need to be done before you walk out the door on the last day. Now start doing these things one month prior to the last day or as soon as possible, depending on when you're, li when you're listening to this. So just focus on it, get it done. Um, often, I, well for me, uh, end of year is end of June. So basically day one of June, I start getting closing and getting ready, my, sorry, I start tearing down my classroom, um, getting it all tidied and cleaned up and that way it's usually done, it's always done, it's not usually done, it's always done by the last day of school. And that includes I am ready for back to school at the end of June. So as soon as I'm done prepping and taking down all for all everything end of year, all the different processes that my school requires, as soon as I'm done that, I immediately, I immediately start planning back to school. And I am done before I leave. <laughs> because I, I can't, I need that break. I also will not remember anything come back to school, which for me is September at the time of me recording this. So do whatever it takes. Just focus, get it done. Work through your lunch breaks. I know that is probably a terrifying thought. Uh, I haven't had a lunch. I always work. I don't like to stay after school. I'm usually burnt out, so I usually go in early or I work through all my breaks and get everything done. Um, also, I have to do this because of everything misertastic. <laughs> I have a limited time, so I'm going to work right through everything. You know what I mean? So, um, do it. Get ready for back to school before you leave. So basically, what I'm saying is do whatever it takes to have it all done and ready for back to school before you leave. This way, you're not going in over the summer and you don't need to do a huge prep for back to school. Again, you don't have to do that because if you play your cards right in June, you could be done before you leave, right? I used to go in a week before to get ready, but now I honestly can show up on day one ready to go. I will even prep a folder of activities that I pre-copy and I will use those in the first two weeks so that I don't even have to think as I transition myself into the new year. And to be honest, I have a back to school binder and I have all the lesson plans and the daily schedules all done for those first two weeks with my master copies. Of course, I change it up every year, you know, you have to, but it's something to go by and also I write any important notes that happen like, oh, generally there's this meet the teacher night on this day or on this week. I'll write all that in there and have it prepped because I know it's going to come. Some things don't change, some things do, but some things don't. So for any of that, I will keep it in my master binder, but uh, if I haven't used it for a couple years, that means it's time to recycle it, recycle it, just get it gone. So. Those are my suggestions. Um, yeah, so prep a folder of activities. Uh, have them pre-copied. You can, photo if you know how, a guess of how many kids you're going to have or photocopy for the max. Um, pre-copy everything for those first two weeks. That way, you don't even have to think as you transition into the new year, come back to school time. So if I'm really good, again, I will write all my lesson plans and even a, like a sketch of day plans too. I won't put necessarily put in the times of things happening, but I will make a brief day plan for each day for those first two weeks as well because generally I will be able to make it work, right? Um, so again, this depends on how teacher tired I am in the end of the year. There's been some years where I've been too teacher tired <laughs> to do this. But it's the goal, right? So even if I get close to that, hey, that's still a lot less than what I might have to do in September or 
August or whenever your back to school is. So be organized, get more freedom later, short-term pain, long-term gain. Well, that is the end of this episode. Don't forget to browse that end of your category in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Just search Mizertastic on TPT or find all the links to everywhere in Artastic Nation on my blog, MizArtastic.com. Have a wonderful day and don't forget to spread love and kindness wherever you go. This is Kathleen McGivern signing out.